Welcome back to Living Life. Today we'd like to talk about planting seeds and putting in plants. You know, I find it very encouraging that in the book of Genesis, after Noah came through the flood, he made a sacrifice to the Lord and the Lord said, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and there will be harvest. There will be day, there will be night, there will be hot, there will be cold, winter and summer. And I find that encouraging because here we are in the midst of a, a global a pandemic and a lot of people are in a tremendous amount of fear. But God has promised us certain things and one of the things that he promised was to take care of us. And here we are at the garden, we're going to plant and this is part of the provision of God. Always seed time. So he gives us seed for the sower and he gives us bread for food. So. Let's take a look. Let's do some planting. Today we're going to plant some pole bean seeds. And we like to use pole beans because, well, it's either pole beans or bush beans. And bush beans you have to bend over or sit on the ground. And that can really get wearisome to your back. I'm six foot four and I really appreciate not having to bend over to the ground all the time I want to pick beans. So we have these trellises made out of concrete remesh and lumber that's been post put in the ground. The first thing I want to do, again last year I put new chips on so I just want to part those chips under the trellis and get down to the uh, to the uh, to the fertile soil that's underneath those chips and plant those seeds. Now it's really important on just about every seed packet they have instructions on the pack the back of the pack and those instructions tell you how deep to plant your seeds and how far apart to put them and that's important because for instance green beans need to be planted about an inch to an inch and a half deep in order to for their for the germination to go well and for them to get good root if you plant lettuce seeds that deep, they'll never come up. They'll, they'll be smothered by the ground. They, they can't make it through the soil. So it's really important to plant the seeds according to what is appropriate for that seed. So we're just going to, there's two ways I usually do this. One is just drop the seeds at the intervals. They should be about three to four inches apart and about an inch down. So one way is to just put them, push them, and then cover them. And it's real important to get a good coverage over them because you don't want airspace with your seeds. You don't want that airspace because that airspace, the, the seeds won't germinate properly and they'll be likely to rot. So you wanna have that good coverage. And now, while we're right here, Christmas time this past year, we brought our Christmas tree in the house and uh, as we're decorating it, we found a praying mantis nest. Well, you don't want that in your house. Those little praying mantises, they hatch out of that nest and they're everywhere in your house. I've heard of people going after them with vacuum cleaners to get them off the drapes and off the windows. So I brought our praying mantis nest right here to the garden. I thought this would be a good place for it. And here it is. So uh, we just bless those little guys to come out of there and praying mantises are tremendous pest control for unwanted bugs. They eat a lot of bugs. Okay, for that's that. One of the other things that we want to plant right now would be some zucchini. And uh, I want to say that it's a little bit early for this area to be planting zucchini and to be planting our beans, but it's been such a warm spring that I'm, and I've checked the weather forecast for the next 15 days and we're pretty good. Every, all the temperatures are above 50 degrees, so I think we're going to be okay. Uh, they say that in this area, after Mother's Day is the best time to plant. You're safe because of the, the, the frost that you have. That, that's uh, the last frost. Uh, last year, <coughs> many people lost a lot of plants because we had a heavy frost on Mother's Day. Last year, we also <coughs> lost a lot of plants because we had such a wet spring 
And what happened is people planted potatoes, they planted their seeds, and then we got a lot of rain, and that rain just rotted the seeds, the seed potatoes and the seeds. So uh, there was a lot of replanting that had to happen last year. I had to replant potatoes twice, and um, or replant them once, and uh, we finally got a good crop. But it's important to store your seeds from year to year as well in a cool, dry place. Uh, uh, last year, some of my pea seeds, I guess they got caught in the rain when I was planting, and I guess the bag stayed wet. And I guess they sprouted in the bag. So this year when I went to plant my seeds, half of the seeds were already sprouted. Well, I didn't know how that, that would work for, for the rest of the seeds. And so I took the ones that weren't sprouted and I planted them and they didn't do well. So I had to replant my, my pea seeds. So it's really important to keep them cool and dry. Now we're gonna put in some zucchini plants, zucchini seeds here. And again, we just, part the chips down to the soil and man you see this soil this is just this is so great this is such great soil a little bit of fungus in there that fungus is really good because that means you're getting you're getting some good decay going on and good composting you can see all those little organisms those little worms in there if you if you look real close maybe i can pull them up here for you well there's some in there trust me there's some <laughs> But I've had uh, people ask me, do I mound, make mounds for squash? And no, I don't. That's traditional to do in traditional gardening, but, but I don't do that. I never have. I just simply take the seeds and put them in, and usually four or five, and then thin them back to about four seeds, three seeds per, uh, per, per area. And uh, that's it right there. Now. Uh, once the seeds are in, you can water those seeds to germinate them. And again, as I've said before, the only time I water this garden, the only time I water a Back to Eden garden is to germinate the seeds. Uh, the soil is really quite moist right now, so I'm not even going to water this. It's, uh, it's good the way it is. After that, it's good for the seeds when they begin to sprout, when they germinate and begin to sprout, it's good for those seeds to find their own water instead of always providing them with water. That way their root system goes deeper, it stretches out in search of that water, they get more nutrients that way, your plants are healthier. So that's that. Now I wanna put some watermelon plants in that I started from seed at home. Now these, these look a little bit yellow because we got quite a lot of rain yesterday and they got this container, not the best container. So it's holding quite a lot of water in there. That's why they look yellow. But last year we had some of the absolute best watermelons we have ever had in our life. And we got one that was 50 pounds and a couple that were 45 pound watermelons and they were so sweet and so good. So we saved the seeds. Now. If they were not heirloom watermelons, we wouldn't be able to save the seeds and have them grow. Hybrid seeds, they won't reproduce. So uh, these, are, these are heirloom, and uh, today's a good day to put them in. So again, we just part those chips down to the good soil. Oftentimes people plant their melons in, in mounds as well, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I have never used mounds here in this garden, and I, I've not really even seen the, the need for it, so we're not going to do that. So we'll just take and get these guys out. Oh dear. Put them in. Put our soil back around there. Press it down just a little bit. Now we're getting some rain in the forecast. Tomorrow we're supposed to have quite a lot of rain. And uh, so I'm, I'm not going to water these again because they're, they do have, a, the soil is quite damp here. And they need to dry out a little bit. Watermelons do tend to like it wetter. 
And this garden is nice because we have places that are wetter than other places. Just to my right, we have cattails, so that means it's pretty wet there. And the watermelons just really do good right here in this spot. So that's our watermelons. And we're going to get some tomatoes planted today as well. There are a few things to know if you don't already know about planting tomatoes that would be helpful. First of all, you can take off these lower leaves and you can plant tomatoes, not just the root system, but you can plant as far up as you plant, that stem will begin to grow roots. And you know, I find that pretty impressive that God created tomatoes and that's what they do. And, uh, you know, the scripture says that we should be rooted and grounded in the love of God. And, you know, if we, if we use a tomato kind of like as, a, as an example, we can be rooted and grounded only so deep in the Lord's love. But when we really get rooted and grounded deeply in Him, not just our roots growing deep, but our entire being, not just our roots, our entire being being rooted and grounded in His love, it absolutely changes our lives and it makes us very appealing to the people around us and to the world we live in. I don't care who it is, Jesus is attractive in anybody. So let's go ahead and plant this plant. What I like to do is I'll just go ahead and dig a hole. and get it opened up there. Now that soil is really rich, full of nutrients, but here's what I like to do. I don't know if it's necessary, but I do it anyway. And I take some composted manure and just drop it in there. Just throw that in there. Put a good amount in throw that some of that soil back in there just mix it up a little bit no I don't have to mix it a lot and boy oh boy the tomatoes are really gonna love this okay then we park that in dig that down and put that tomato in build it up around that stem so that stem gets a, a good root system going get our chips back in there and here we go that tomato's happier already can you see it smile now again we're a little bit early for planting tomatoes we haven't reached that mother's day time when they say it's safe to plant in our planting zone. So, if there's a risk of a frost, one of the things that you can do is take a bucket, like a five gallon bucket, and just tip it upside down and put it right over the plant. That'll keep it from freezing. And it's, these wood chips are amazing because they really hold the temperature in. They, they act as an insulator. If you have if you have something under these wood chips and the ground and, and it freezes, these wood chips will keep it frozen. You'll be amazed at how in the early spring you can park these wood chips just on the top, but underneath you got ice. And the same is true in the reverse. If the ground is warm like it is now and you get a frost, these wood chips are going to keep that ground warm and they're going to keep the heat in for this plant so the wood chips are very beneficial for that and that's with the tomatoes <laughs> 